This is LS11. Welcome along to LS11 Extra and a very special one once again from the Peacock uh, on Elland Road. My name is Darren Harper and joining us as ever, of course, our resident rock star from the Pigeon Detectives. It is Ryan Wilson. Hello. Good afternoon. Yeah, afternoon. Yeah, it is. Losing track of time. (laughs) See, you're still on Greek time. I am still on Greek time. Nice holiday. Um, Yeah, wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Apart from having to wear a mask on a plane, which got me really hot and bothered, then I was worried about getting a covid uh, not a COVID test, but you know, right. they do your heat zapping your head. Oh, yeah, and, and you I thought you'd be and high I, temperature. I got off the plane with a big red head because I'd had this mask <laughs> on my face. So <laughs> I was kind of thinking, they're going to look at me and go, he's got COVID. Um, I haven't got COVID. The only infectious thing about me is my smile, Darren, so I'm totally fine. Oh, hark at that, eh? Good, that one, it? Uh, it was very good, and very good. Uh, big thanks to the Peacock allowing us uh, to come down and uh, have a chat about Leeds United uh, with our special guest from the mighty square ball. It is Michael Normanton. Hello, Michael. Hello. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's lovely to have you on. How are you doing? Good, yeah. It's, um, it's nice, isn't it, the Premier League? I think it's... Uh, <laughs> It's not as bad as it's not as hard as we thought, is it? it looks quite easy so far. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not that bad, is it? Really, I saw a stat. What was the stat I saw that I thought was very funny? Leeds have only lost one game in the Premier League in sixteen years, which that's pretty good. That's a pretty that, good yeah. stat, really. I did yeah. notice Skybet had our form against Liverpool on the website for it, and he was like, "Well, I'm not sure it's strictly relevant anymore. What happened? <laughs> what happened eighteen years ago, or whatever?" But it was, they still were persisting with it. So yeah. they were persisting with it, definitely. Uh, what's been your, your your thoughts on the, on the summer for Leeds United? It's a, one game in, which was spectacular. But what, what's been your thoughts on the summer? It's just been fun. I think we're not used to it being kind of relaxed, and the signings have helped. I think we we made a couple of good good quality acquisitions, and everyone's still on the high of last season. Yeah, and I think for once. I feel like almost everyone is happy. Even last, even it does feel like that. Even it? going into last season with Bielsa having signed up and everyone was thrilled with that, I still think there was a little bit of hesitancy of can it work for a second season? Should we really be strengthening a lot more than we than we are doing after after just failing? You know, should we just buy five or six players to make sure, absolutely certain of it? Whereas this summer, I think everyone's used to how Bielsa works. We kind of accepting that there's not going to be a massive change of players, so we don't want a massive change of players and. The people we have signed seem, on paper at least, really good. Apart from giving away the penalties, obviously. They're not the greatest of starts, but I think it's understandable given they've, they've only had like a tiny window of time to actually train with the team and everything. Yeah, so. true. But I think all looking good. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. not looking too bad. Where did you watch the Liverpool game? I watched some did, sun terrace. No, yeah, a, 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 a bar in Greece um, with, with my pal, actually, uh, Justin Slee, former guest of the show, used to be a photographer for Leeds oh, United right, for yeah. years when Leeds were in the Premier League. You've probably seen quite a few of his iconic photographs. The, ironically, the, the Viduka one, you know, when we beat him 4-3 oh, yeah. and there's a Viduka chair and you can see the 4-3. Yeah, it? he took that photograph. An old friend of mine and him and his wife flew out to the same island, very coincidentally, for the last couple of days of my holiday. And first thing he texted me was, where are you watching game? So I said, well, I'll come and meet you because we were only a few miles down the road and I had a car. So um, we went and sat, the, sat and watched the game. There was, in front of us, it were it's quiet in general because of what's the situation it's yeah. not as busy as usual but the bar we were in were really quiet and in front of us there were three blokes a Liverpool fan a Huddersfield Town fan and a Scum fan and, <laughs> and so we were sat Sounds behind like it. a start of a bad joke yeah well yeah yeah, yeah well, it, it was and to be fair they were really nice guys and like everybody all the pundits everything really complimentary about Leeds but I said to them after I said I said God, you're a, a bit of a misfit, a scum fan. Well, I didn't say scum, I'm quite polite. Um, <laughs> a Manchester United fan and uh, a <laughs> Huddersfield Town fan and a, and a Liverpool fan all sat watching games together. So, no, it were a good game, of course. Um, it's not very often that when Leeds get beat and we concede four goals, I come away with a smile, you know? So, yeah, um, just nice to see us back in the Premier League after all this time, <laughs> but also really frustrating as well that we can't, get to see it and witness it properly you know I mean I was the other side of Europe watching it in a bar and on TV and all my best mates who go to home and away games they also just watched it on TV so it were irrelevant that I were in a different country which is a sad thing but obviously ultimately the, the big things leads being back in the Premier League and putting a good show on I don't, I, I don't yeah. know the stat exactly but it's one of the not many teams scored three past Liverpool at Anfield so um, no, we did well. We did well, and I was just buzzing to see the lads. So you could say, Michael, you could tell, couldn't you, how how important it was to the players as well. You, you know, after the game, saw Bamford with a big grin on with his arm around Mo Salah, and 
it's nice to see that and it's like it's, it's special to them as well I think so I think that's part of what's been nice about keeping the squad together when Villa and Fulham came up I know people were, when we were signing people over summer but that was the the thing being thrown around on Twitter our Leeds, Leeds are doing a Fulham or but actually it's the same team as we we went up with and it, we've had to replace Ben White and we did all of the full season with one striker so they're they just players that needed replacing but I think I think there's a real affection for the, for the players that have got us up and I think there's a even with Bamford who got a lot of stick last year I was kind of glad to see him starting because I mm. feel like he's earned a chance to have a go at it yeah. and I think that that's that's with the players as well they feel like they they deserve a go at it and they're, they're out to prove themselves and I think the, what we saw against Liverpool was that you know they can do it It's not, and there's nothing to be scared of in this league we're not going to play anyone as good as Liverpool probably Man City I guess will be up there Chelsea have strengthened well but away at Anfield is as, is as tough as it gets in this league yeah. and we gave them a real scare I mean I think they still had the better of the game probably and they certainly in the last 15-20 minutes they were putting us under a lot of pressure but we stood up to it pretty well and I think had it not been for the giving away a daft penalty we could probably got a point out of that and yeah. you don't see teams do what we did to Liverpool the way yeah. we go at them and it was really encouraging I think to see Jack Harrison and Helder Costa looking so good mm. and potentially having a little bit more space I think helped them because we've, we've been so used to last season teams coming and having 10 men behind the ball for the entire game and when we're trying to get shots off there's we're trying to put it through a box which has got eight men stood in, <laughs> in there and it's it was really difficult whereas the nice thing in this game was that you saw the amount of space that was available to us mm. Whether or not other worst teams in this league will see that and go for the old championship approach and just try and pack men behind. I can imagine teams like Burnley Palace and Burnley yeah. might just go for that, just sort of pretend they're yeah. looting in the championship for a bit <laughs> and just stick a load of people and wait for us to make a mistake. But I like to think there'll be enough games in this division where teams will feel the need to come at us and try and get something mm. from the game. So should make it should make it more entertaining as much as anything because it was... As well as we played last year, sometimes it was quite a grind watching us just go at teams and try and break that that bank of uh, two banks of four down over and over again. It was mm. just it was just hard to watch sometimes. So I'm, I'm hoping it'll be more entertaining in general. Yeah, I think it probably will be, won't it? It was interesting as well. I watched. Um, I think I saw it on on Twitter the, this morning. Watching and a fair few Leeds fans have, uh, have retweeted it of Gary Neville uh, mm. waxing lyrical about Leeds United. Mm. Um, that's that's got to be something for <laughs> <laughs> sort of uncomfortable, but <laughs> he seems he's, he's tough as Gary Neville because he seems like quite a decent bloke as yeah. well. All the stuff he's yeah, like the kind of stuff he's done outside of football as well, all seems quite decent. And it's it's tough trying to have it's I mean, hard to like having him, having to sort of reappraise him and be like, yeah. oh, maybe he's maybe he's not an obed after all. <laughs> <laughs> I struggle to make it fit, but yeah. I mean, the praise has come from everywhere, which has been a bit odd as well. Like every, yeah. I've not seen any pundits kind of saying that we were lucky or that we you know we should change our style everyone was just enjoying I think the fact that we put on such a good game and I think they'll there probably won't be many games as good as that for the rest of the season now so to get off to start with that one was just was just brilliant yeah I agree with that we're fresh weren't it we're fresh to see and I think all the the pundits and everybody just loved it like wow Leeds actually came out to attack Liverpool and nine times out of ten it, teams would go to Anfield and park the bus and yeah just basically not get well, not get destroyed if they can go away the point brilliant but Leeds Leeds tactic were typically Bielsa style at best form of defence is attack you know I mean what did you think about like the defence Michael obviously Stuart coming in and uh, I, I thought he did alright considering he's up against the three best best players in the Premier League arguably and um, but I, I were a bit worried when the team sheet come out you know obviously yeah. We've got a right winger playing left back. I think they're only like Luke Ayling who was in his natural position, mm -hmm. really. You know, yeah. Cock obviously is a centre half, but he's new to the team. Um, were you a bit concerned with that, Michael? Massively so. I mean, mm -hmm. it'd be worrying to go with an untried pairing against, you know, Barnsley in the Championship. You'd have been worried, but yeah. seeing who they're up against and and as I say, Strike played a few games at the end of last season, but it wasn't even in that position. Mm. So that was, they're his first starts for us in centre back. I know he, he came on quite disastrously against Cardiff when we, <laughs> oh, yeah. when we threw away that three nil at home. So for, the, for that to be his, his introduction to it, but I thought he was brilliant actually. Defensively, they had a few dodgy moments. Right in the first couple of minutes, actually, Firmino turned him and he sort of ran in behind him, mm. and you just thought you, I don't know. I had a bit of a panic then, thinking he's he's not necessarily used to this sort of movement and stuff but he grew into the game and I think I think Cock did as well I think he by the end of it he looked a lot more assured yeah. as well yeah but I think as probably more than anywhere else on the pitch defensive 
pairings, the central defensive pairings are, are important and you need to play together and get used to how one another plays. And they've probably had, you know, a few training sessions together at best. Yeah. So it, it wasn't a surprise to see there were holes there. But mm-hmm. overall, I thought individually they both, they both did all right. Just maybe the cohesion as a, as a whole wasn't quite as we'd expect. But then equally, new players and against a, a quality of opposition that we've, yeah. we've never faced before. So Exactly. I think if that would have been against... Say Fulham, for example, who were playing on Saturday and, um, you know, would have conceded four goals. You might be a bit more concerned because mm. it's essentially another championship club, another promoted team. But when you're coming up against Liverpool, it, like I just said at the beginning of this, I came away with a smile, even though we'd lost the game, conceded four goals because we because we were so spirited in how we played. And if Ben White would have played and Coops, would it have been di- a different scoreline? Maybe, who knows? You know, you know sorry if that's if we got Ben White over Cock yeah. for example but you know obviously we can't think like that can we we've just got to move forward and like you said they probably only had Cock and um, Stuart probably only had a couple of training sessions together because as soon as we signed Cock he went off to Germany on international duty so um, I think they did I think they did well all things considering because it must be terrifying having Mane, Firmino and Salah mm. running at you because Liverpool <laughs> yeah. Liverpool play on the break with a lot of pace Yeah, and um and I thought Ailing did a good job with, on Mane, you know, and I thought... Ailing was great. I thought yeah. he, he fitted straight in. I don't mm. think he looked... He, he didn't look uncomfortable at any point in that game. And he mm. was still getting forward as much as ever. And Yeah. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was great. I think um, when we spoke to Angus Kinnear a few weeks ago about... Um, just off off the podcast, actually, we were asking about transfers and stuff. And he was... I was asking if there was any backup for Calvin at any point, And he said, no, Bielsa says, strike can do it. He just basically said he's good enough. Right. Wow. So... So he's obviously he's a big huge fan amount. Of him. Like, he obviously, mm-hmm. has a huge amount of confidence in him. Um, mm-hmm. So, and I, th- and I think rightly so, given what we saw at the end of last season and this, mm-hmm. it's just that he he seemed to come from nowhere a little bit because he yeah. wasn't he wasn't even necessarily a first choice centre back on the bench at some points, was no. he during his time here? But then I don't know if he's just had a, a sort of a, a, a huge spell of development, or Bales has managed to tell him to play in a slightly different way. That means he's now he's now considered a first teamer. But yeah, it looks um, looks good, and I know that the club seems to have a lot of faith in him. It seems like Juan Paveda as well towards the back end of last season and Struick seem to just come on the scene mm. even though they've been at the club obviously Paveda have been there oh. since January but they've both been at the club for a long time and then it seems like the lockdown period it's as if they've maybe stepped the game up or yeah. or like you said Michael maybe Bielsa has coached them into a style mm. and they've, they've worked on that over the lockdown period because all of a sudden they were featured in, in the, the remaining nine games quite quite a bit and, and now obviously Struick starts Legion United's first Premier League game in 16 years it's it's a huge achievement so obviously you know there's the same goes in Bielsa we trust and and if Bielsa wants him as a backup then then I'm happy with that he, I think he's I think he looks pretty solid obviously you want your your best players in to start with you know your Coops et al so um, but as a backup I'm I'm pretty pretty happy with that what about signings? Um, obviously, we talked a little bit about Cock. Um, Rodrigo, I mean, you know, like, like you said, it was a penalty, but, you know, it was definitely much a, it was definitely a striker's challenge. There's no doubt about that. But not much you can tell from the amount of time he had on the pitch. Not really. And he, he came on at the point where the game was just turning, so we, we weren't really having much of the ball, which I guess explains why he's there back in his own box fouling people. But <laughs> I, I, he looked great. I mean, he, you don't get in, the, in Spain's team by being a bad player dear. so it's it's weird that when we were signing him we went from it feels like within a few years we've gone from being used to signing absolutely terrible players to signing <laughs> Spain's number nine and loads of people going is he really is he that good is he much of an improvement is is he good enough to, he's 29 he seems a bit old uh, we should be we should be happy that we've signed him it's it's madness really that there's there's any debate about it but yeah. I think we're all probably still hurting a little bit from the the Ridsdale years there's still that little bit of like oh it's a lot of money though like yeah. do, can we, if we really got much money maybe we're better off just trying to get you know Liam Dickinson on loan again or something <laughs> just go just go for something cheap <laughs> oh, well the, the other transfer that, again that's um, that's taken on a little bit more heat I suppose in the last 24 mm. hours is um, uh, Rodrigo De Paul mm. um, and basically because of a tweet from the square boys it seems <laughs> yeah this was Dan's <laughs> method of trying to get him to sign he just said he was going to tweet him every day with like a how you doing see you soon type message hope, hope you can hope you can get to Leeds quickly and then yesterday I was I saw it like literally as it happened I just I'd seen him doing it I was like hell. then in, straight in the replies it was right at the top of it wow it was Rodrigo de Paul he's like 
And they're like checking his accounts, check it wasn't like a fake one, and checking yeah. his, he's got the blue tickets. Him, it's him. He's <laughs> he's done like a little. I think it was a little, little fingers it crossed. Fingers crossed, yeah, for the thing. people who have not it was, seen it. Fingers and then, crossed. And then he all oh, got deleted, and his account was deactivated within about yeah. an hour. But for that moment, <laughs> it was absolutely brilliant. We had like um, I can't remember the guy's name, but some Italian journalist was like one point. Seven, it, one point <laughs> seven million Twitter followers was sort of we're kind of doing it as as breaking news. Like yeah. oh, it seems like it seems like the transfer's close. He's just he's just tweeted this and um, <laughs> yeah, so crazy. But he's another one that looks like a real step up for us. I think he'd be yeah. he'd be amazing as as much as we love Pablo and have relied on him. Yeah, he's not getting any younger, is he? And I think mm. if he can if we can sign someone maybe to take his place in the team and then Pablo can do what he was doing at the end of last season where he can come off the bench and change games then that's that's probably for the best because he was he was probably actually one of our worst players I would say was Pablo I, I agree with that and it's hard to say that yeah. Pablo we love him so much but I don't know that that intensity in, mid, in the midfield from, from Liverpool uh, he seemed to be the only player that I thought looked like he struggled a little bit mm. and um, and obviously we need we need somebody of, of his elk you know some you know, something like that to, to help create for mm. us in the future. So I think Rodrigo de Paul would be absolutely superb. And then Pablo, as, as an impact player coming off the bench, etc. I think it's a, a winning combination. Yeah, I think it's, it's very hard with Pablo because he's, he's he, I think he, I don't know what you think, but I, I would class him now as a club legend for what mm. he did at the end of last season in particular. Yeah. Just for, He's been really good for a couple of years for us, but I think that those games after lockdown and the way he turned them and the Swansea goal and stuff, I think that's the sort of stuff that We'll, we'll always talk about so he, yeah. he's his place is secure as far as I'm concerned but it's whether it's trying to make sure that we can continue to get the best out of him and also not to the not have him in the team to the detriment of the of the side because he's not he's not quite fit enough to play a full 90 minutes mm. anymore yeah. but I mean it, I, I think he's still got a, he's, well, one game in I still think he's got a big role to play this season yeah yeah no doubt about it well, while we're talking a little bit about square ball, yeah. um, d- tell us how you got involved with it yourself. How did it all start for you? It start, I mean, I was first had a thing published in there when I was about fourteen, and it was it was terrible. And I just sent it in. It was like very <laughs> early days of the internet. Pretty much the first, well, maybe not the first website I went on because I was because I was fourteen. <laughs> but um, one of the first websites I went on was the Square Ball because it had um, I'd bought it and it had like it was in the days when website addresses were about this long oh, on yeah. the page. It was like slash chat yeah. slash html <laughs> dot it was a ridiculously long thing but I, f- I managed to find this website and it had a forum on it and i signed up on there and i managed to find a place you could submit articles and stuff so i got i had some stuff in there say when i was like 14 or whatever and then bits and bobs over the years sort of gradually improved maybe quality wise the stuff i sent in i'm not sure but then it, they stopped making it around 2006 7 there would been like one or two produced and the whole web the whole magazine had become more or less a copy and paste of, of a, an internet forum. Right. Right. And it was really thin and it just it just wasn't great. And then it stopped being made altogether, but the internet forum continued. So it had, I think it had a year of not being produced at all. And then there was a discussion got going on there of should we get it going again? Um, and just sort of said, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> right. So me and, me and Dan, who hosts the podcast now, we said we'd, we'd kind of make it again mm-hmm. and we asked people to send stuff in. Um, Oddy, who had been involved with it years back, he got in touch and he worked in printing stuff at the time as well. So he, so he helped us sort that out. Then I think from the, I can't remember if it was in the first issue or the second issue, Moscow sent stuff in and we really liked it. And mm-hmm. that's kind of when that was the formation of it was that. And it's been the same people involved yeah. since then. The only sort of major addition to the kind of core group of us doing it has been Eamon, who does all the design stuff now. Because mm-hmm. when we first started, it was me and Dan trying to do that with like a, illegally downloaded copy of Adobe InDesign <laughs> yeah. that we were trying to piece it together on yeah. it. Like we didn't know what we were doing. We were literally like Googling stuff, trying yeah. to work out well, why why is that not text not wrapping around there and trying to make yeah. it look <laughs> yeah. and we made it look like fine. Yeah. It looked better than it used to. But compared to the magazine you see now and what Eamon's done to it, I mean that's it's Eamon's job. Mm. He does he does a magazine for his for his job over in Ireland, but I, it looks it looks brilliant now. So then from and then from the magazine, Dan worked in radio so he Sort of said about doing a podcast and yeah I mean when we when we did our first podcast we'd met we'd emailed Moscow and stuff but it was we'd met him once before then we sort of did a pre-podcast little meet up and we yeah. were sort of saying this is what we're going to do with it um and sort of liked him and we're like oh, do you want to fancy coming on it 
Um, he's got a real dry sense of humour, hasn't he? Um, Moscow. He, yeah. He's he's real. He's good actually. He's really good. Kind of it works. All three are quite different, which obviously works. Yeah, I think it's weird with with Moscow because obviously now he's he's. For, well, back then he was a really good writer. He's, he's even better now, and now he's a he's like kind of Times best selling book and stuff. Yeah. But oh, like, yeah, of course. <laughs> back then he was working in the planning department at Leeds Council, and he was doing it. <laughs> he was doing an English degree um, part time. So he obviously was something he wanted to do, but he was he was yeah he was kind of he, doing planning application mm. stuff, which was obviously a complete waste. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so so I mean it's it's sort of good that good that he got him out of that. And I was doing a normal job until about a year ago. Mm. I, I've always had to do it alongside other work. Yeah, uh, and a year ago, I mean, I was just fed up as well. So yeah. it's got reached one of those points. Was yeah. like, so pissed off with this. About just a nice day when you handed your notice in, what wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I yeah, managed to send a slightly spiky email around for the left. <laughs> <laughs> just threw it. Just <laughs> dropped a few grenades on the way out. Um, but yeah, so, so that was good. And then I think the Bielsa effect. We'd kind of had a season of that, and it just made sense. I thought, well, if it's now on ever with it for square ball, like mm. we can, we can try and go full time on it and push it on and do more podcasts and make it better and actually it's, it's daft stuff as well that people probably don't think of but just trying to do the admin for it has got has become quite big because there's now we've essentially got a lot of customers mm. so you just constantly like I've spent, I've spent all morning today just changing addresses and refunding orders that have gone wrong and some yeah. of that like dead boring stuff as well that we're doing yeah. on it now as well but yeah. it's good to be doing it like yeah. it's, it's an absolute honor to be able to do it as a job and yeah. when you say to, when you sometimes say to people I'm doing it full time they're like bloody hell yeah. it's amazing you're like <laughs> yeah. it's, it's pretty yeah. good <laughs> like, I can't, I can't right. complain like compared to having to do it I mean I was, I was used to work at ITV it just in commercial sales stuff and mm. they essentially sponsored an awful lot of square ball because I did a lot of square ball whilst sat at my desk <laughs> pretending to do <laughs> pretending to do work for them I was always like writing something or doing some podcast prep there and stuff so they did a good service for IT I know ITV gets sick from Leeds fans but you know they did they did some good work for square ball in those days so there you go and the, the podcast I mean the podcast has gone from strength to strength hasn't it really and and you've sort of evolved and doing other podcasts as well obviously with the match ball and that sort of thing did you all find it quite I mean Dan's a broadcaster but did you all find it quite easy to to jump into sort of podcasting not uh, not really I think in the early days, in particular, I used to listen to them, and I used to I used to hate listening back to myself because I'd be like, I'd find little, you you'll do this yourself, I'm sure, where you you find little almost verbal ticks that you've got where you oh, say yeah. certain things over and over again. Yeah. I'd listen to it, and the guy going, idiot, idiot, stop yeah. saying it. <laughs> you've said you've said basically four times in the space of thirty seconds <laughs> yeah. or whatever, and little things like that. I used to get I get really annoyed by, but people have generally been quite nice about it, and we were the in the early days, we were kind of the only. Leads podcast going as well, so mm-hmm. I guess people weren't maybe quite as critical as they are now. I know <laughs> yeah. now there's like there's quite a few. Everyone's got a Leeds podcast. Yeah, now. they really yeah. have, and we can just all be guests on each other's. <laughs> yeah, you know, like yeah, yeah. that's all we need to do. Sort of human centipede of yeah. Leeds United <laughs> podcasts, <laughs> just doing doing content for each other. But <laughs> since yeah, but since then, it, it, which is I think it's good that that there's loads of them. It's it's nice that people are interested enough to do it as much as yeah. anything because I think that's. That was the, the thing when, I guess, when we started doing it. It was pretty dark times, generally yeah. speaking. Like yeah. We've been through some pretty turgid seasons trying yeah. to talk about it. That it's, it's so nice to have good things to talk about all of a sudden. Well, we started yeah. the LS11, the original form of it. Um, and the week we started it, the very first episode, the pilot episode, if you want to call it, was Badgegate with, when right. Higginbottom reached <laughs> Oh, out. that's right. Yeah, so yeah, the yeah. very first episode was literally just talking about how horrendous that badge was. Mm. So we had <laughs> half a season, roughly, of... of getting beat and mm-hmm. then and then Bielsa came so it's been quite easy for us really over the last two seasons yeah. so we've been doing it two and a half seasons we had, we did that half a season where it was horrendous and just miserable every week talking but you yeah. obviously when you're doing the podcast you don't want to be so mm. so you're negative. trying to look at the yeah. positives <laughs> yeah you do I'm not sure, I'm, I'm not sure we always <laughs> did I think yeah. we used to just we used yeah. to just dwell on well. how terrible everything was sometimes <laughs> but sometimes that's all there was so when fairness. we all first yeah, that's true. can you remember the first episode roughly when who was in charge when, what period was it I can remember it in completely clear it was completely by chance it did seem that we were trying to piggyback on something but we'd planned it for ages but then it was the day after we beat Man U in the cup all right wow it just happened to be we'd said we'd kind of said oh we'll do we'll start them in the new year yeah and then it just happened it was the it was that game was that game the Sunday the third 
Mm, I can't remember can't the date. We it, was the, it, was the mo- it was the Monday after yeah. after we beat Scum, basically, it was the first one. So we were off to a flyer on it. And I yeah. think that that probably helped, actually, because it meant a lot of people have wanted to just revel in that, yeah, in that yeah, result yeah, yeah. and what have you. <clears throat> Whereas it's weird over the years, a lot of people, when things have been terrible, people have been saying, oh, this is good for you. It gives you lots of stuff to talk about. And it, it's true to an extent, but it's all negative stuff. Yeah. And people, yeah. you'll get, there's some good gallows humour to be had in it. But generally speaking, people want to support a good football team. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's what we've essentially wanted as well. We've yeah. had to get involved in looking at land registry documents and company's house <laughs> things to try and work out what's going on at points. But that's not why any of us, it's not why any of us wanted to come to Ellen Road the first time. Like, you know what? You, I think some people think it's been like fun for us to do it, but it's not. It's just yeah. been that that's, that's unfortunately been where we are, trying to work out where money's going and yeah. what is a debenture and how, what is Chateau <laughs> Fiducier? Why are they based in Switzerland? And that's based in who, the K- who, in who, who is this Yvonne person I keep seeing all over the place? <laughs> Yvonne. Oh, Yvonne. Yvonne. bless her. Did you know Yvonne from your, yeah, knew her, your radio? Knew her, yeah, what was she like? Because she was always with Ken, wasn't she? Yeah, she was with him from the 60s, really. Yeah. Right from like where the, where the word go, I think, really. Um, yeah, she was... I I always got on quite well with her after a while. I didn't like her, first of all, but I, mm. I, I got on quite well with her. Definitely a real person, though. Not she just, is not a real, just Ken with her. No, she's actually <laughs> a real person. Okay. She's actually a real person. Person. But no, she she was all right actually, Yvonne. Mm. But yeah, she's like on every one of his companies. Yeah, somewhere. she is. Him yeah. and Mark Taylor was always there as well. He was, he was kind of his lawyer, wasn't he? Do you remember yeah. the first time I met you? Well, you reminded me of this. We were at a, a Leeds night um, with was it Jermaine Beckford and yeah, Eddie Gray? Um, it was um, launch of that. ups and downs. Yes, that, uh, the book. Um, and you mentioned it. I didn't realise that because um, obviously when I was at Radio Yorkshire, there was a box that we had. Um, over the road, and uh, we used to give out the tickets on um, uh, for competitions. Mm. And then one night, I'd, I'd, I didn't go in there that often. I was only in there maybe about two, three or four times. Um, but on the one, it might have been like a Tuesday night. It was when we beat Bournemouth and Luke it Murphy was Bournemouth, scored. That's why I was there. It was that game? Um, and um, uh, these, you know, it was full box, and everybody was having some nice drinks. And then I always remember because at the end there was just that, like, these square ball stickers. Uh, like um, uh, it popped up all over like the box and outside and on the back of the seats and I'm thinking oh, where have they come from <laughs> I didn't realise it was Michael who was in the box and putting square ball stickers yeah, it was, it, we did the Visit Beeston thing with Ken on and um, it, Visit there was, Beeston there was some other one there was another uh, Don't Believe the Tripe one with, with Ken's <laughs> face on and in front of a microphone so I was trying to just secrete him around his box so that it was <laughs> That's a little treat for him. Oh, perfect. Visit Beeston. That was, I think, my, yeah, oh, I I think my favourite bit that you used to do, was I think this was on the podcast as well, was um, we listened to Ken Bates' interview, so you don't have to. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, I'd never got a choice in that, because I used you to, have to, to conduct sit there it, and record it. Yeah. Um, but that always used to make me laugh, I thought. How much did you used to cringe sometimes when you'd, you'd obviously get you what you were meant to be asking him through, and he was like, oh, God, there's something about, there's something about China on here. <laughs> there, Do I have China to ask Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> um, these were all the top topics that he, it, it got to the point where he'd only want to talk about Leeds for like 30 seconds mm-hmm. and then it was just like let's get into everything else and I would send him off all this stuff that we could talk about and mm-hmm. it would just I'd ask him a question and then 10 minutes later I'd ask another question towards the end they stopped broadcasting it and he didn't yeah, know we for just a bit, it, did we he? just put it on oh, the right. <laughs> yeah and um, he didn't he didn't know and then he, he did find out though didn't he and didn't he have a he, did, yeah he did have a little bit of a bark yeah, yeah. but yeah. you know we were like you know, i think by that point we were online anyway so it was like pff, doesn't really matter mm. really Oh, we've really. missed we've missed his views on Black Lives Matter. I feel yes. he'd have, like had some great things to say. I think he's Record. definitely he's, he, uh, he, uh, he's the voice of the woke generation. Is KB? <laughs> uh, I think it would be very interesting to hear his views on the current. I'm sure he's definitely uh, wearing his mask all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, that did, did make me laugh. Uh, but also on the square ball as well, we'll talk about the, the, the charity work that you've done, uh, mm. re- certainly recently as well. And there's been some spectacular stuff. The Centenary shirt, um, £30,000, over £30,000, yeah. that one. That's insane. I feel almost bad for taking any credit for that because all we did was <laughs> get a shirt and sort of went does anyone want this it's a, it's a fiver to buy a ticket and loads of people did I mean Berardi deserves the credit for that really because yeah. we interviewed him and kind of stayed in touch a bit and we were going to buy a shirt to get signed and then they all sold out within about half an hour so we missed out and then he we, so we just sent him a message saying are there any can you get us older one and he said 
I can't basically, but I've, we've been given a couple each as, yeah. as our, our match shirts, so you can have one oh, of them. Right. So I think so. The one that someone won is a particularly unique because the match ones are slightly different to the to the ones that were available in the shops as well. Oh, right. So the person who, who won it has got like a one in, I guess, like one in a hundred kind of mm. shirt in the end. Yeah. Wow. Um, but yeah, he, he was really good. Just got it signed for us and what have you. But yeah, the, the amount we set like a fairly modest target on the just giving page because we didn't want to look stupid for not yeah. reaching it <laughs> and within about an hour of of it launching it we were past the target and it was like bloody hell so it's basically amazing the stuff it's done as well we've um we've seen all the pictures of it now it bought a load of new furniture for the for the children's ward in there so it's got like uh, all the bedside tables and the sort of tables that go over the bed and stuff they're all like hospital beige sort of color whereas now they're all like they've given bottle nice colorful ones and stuff for oh, so nice. you can kind of see what, you do, what it's done and it's uh it's really good you nice. should go in and sticker it up but nice stickers not, yeah not yeah. 10 bits <laughs> some <laughs> nice stickers yeah yeah, yeah. They, they, no. they've got they're going through enough in there they don't need ken yeah no, exactly some, <laughs> some nice square ball ones which it's it's absolutely brilliant i mean i were i didn't well, i didn't know what to expect either as a fan obviously a fan of square ball listen to you guys and um when you're doing that for that's brilliant and then when it got to 30 grand, I'm like, I'm like A, it's amazing. Leeds fans are amazing. Mm. And B, obviously, you guys are brilliant for, for doing that. And Berardi, of course. So, But one thing, another charity event you did, and I don't know how you did it, sitting up for 24 hours playing football manager. <laughs> oh, I dipped into that quite a few yeah. times during the um, night. You so. had some superb guests on board. Yeah. And you made, what, 14? I've got my notes. I can't, I can't 13, what it was now. Thir- something around that, I think. 13,000 yeah. pounds. And that was for amazing. the food bank charities that... The Legion United Sports Trust also uh, have a heavy hand in. So it kind of was like an association with the trust as well. Yeah, we something? just we just kind of piggybacked yeah. on it. We were going to do yeah. it for. We talked about doing it for as a charity thing before, and the trust were doing the food bank thing at the time, and it was start of COVID, and it was it's, it's a point where I guess it's probably a real pinch point for people who are maybe losing jobs or people mm-hmm. who are on um, who are on like zero hour contracts and stuff will be just being told there is no work from at the moment so we thought food banks were kind of a good thing to support so rather than do our own thing we just thought well we'll just there's already a page for it we'll just kind of set do it through via the trust um <clears throat> truth be told that there have been times in my life when i've done not far off 24 hours on <laughs> on champ manager anyway just just because i was just because i was bored um so i think i've probably done about 10 or 11 hours in truth before without yeah. stopping um, did you put a suit on if you got to FA Cup final? I, I didn't normally. I did for this for the playoff final. I did, <laughs> well, it was a top half of a suit. I didn't. I just. Had, <laughs> I think I still had like pajama bottoms on just because there was it's lockdown rules. The webcam only covered the, yeah. the top half. So, uh, but yeah, it was one of those things that we, we thought we started playing Champ Manager on the podcast. We didn't. We'd done the 0102 version for that, but I was trying to think of a different game we could play, so it wasn't just a repeat of it. And I thought, mm. well, the minus 15 year was a, a memorable one, and it's a good kind of challenge to try and do over over 24 hours and yeah. we, so we we did go up via the playoffs in there which was nice beat yeah. Brighton 4-1 can still yeah. remember it um, <laughs> but even I mean it probably helped that we had John Richardson on by this point but I think by when we got promoted it was about one and a half one in the morning or something but there was still I think still one and a half thousand people watching it yeah. at that time which yeah, was crazy and I think some people watched nearly all of it wow so um, Moscow was slowly getting leathered on gin or something. What it, he, 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 he was going for it, wasn't he? I remember he, really? tuning in in the morning and he just, just saw him stand up and just, you know, to his <laughs> face, he's just like, and he just kind of walked off. And I think you're like, where, where are you going, Moscow? And you're like, yeah. <laughs> and then 20 minutes later, he just comes back down. And he's like, <laughs> he'd, he'd actually done pretty well because I've, I've been through enough things in Moscow and I've seen him drink to know that he gets very sleepy and it sort of stops functioning. <laughs> quite quickly in, in these things and he did manage to see it through but I think when we won the playoff final I think he opened a bottle of Carver and it, it, it ruined, ruined him, him. <laughs> it just that was the end of him more yeah. or less he just became very slurry after that um, and the, I mean the midnight sort of session we get ended up getting some random guests on and stuff and it all yeah. became very like end of a house party vibe <laughs> with people just like oh yeah yeah just sort of chatting any old yeah. bollocks really yeah. well while having a game kind of clicking away at the background um and then we did go back and finish it off later as well because we you? got promoted again. Got promoted right. to the Premier League via the playoffs the second oh. in the second season. So oh, yeah, wow. we did finish it off. But yeah, that, I mean that was good. So we had Matt Abbott on as well. He was a, was a poet. Yeah, just in the, in the Leeds poetry and stuff on yeah. there. Um, Phil, Rumble, Phil Hay dropped in. Yeah, Rob Holmes is another comedian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Phil was on there. 
Um, and then John Richardson did like did a long a long stint. He, yeah. was, he initially said he was going to come for like an hour, but then yeah. I think he got hooked in because we were in the playoffs and he wanted to see how it ended. <laughs> so, but he ended up as well as well as just the normal donations. I think he ended up auctioning off his onesie that he was wearing and did he? stuff like that. I think he got 150 quid for it. Someone oh, donated nice. off the back of it. It's quite so. cheap, really, for a John Richardson yeah. onesie, isn't so, it? So really? yeah, I don't think requested it unwashed or unwashed yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but yeah no so that was that was good and it was good fun and it was yeah. and it's one of those things that it was actually it's really very easy for us to do in truth because yeah. it's just while well, staying awake for 24 hours is a, a bit of an inconvenience it's all right i was just sat yeah. around at home yeah. drinking beer playing playing a computer game like to have raised money that's actually helped people yeah, yeah. for doing that is is pretty good really so yeah no. it's excellent my hat's off to you. Brilliant. So 30 grand from the shirt, 13 grand from that. It's incredible stuff and all for good causes as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and we, uh, we were planning on doing, well, I say, I say we, it's just me who ends up doing the walking stuff. But <laughs> for the first game back in the Premier League, I wanted to do walk from Bolton because obviously the sort of site of the relegation back to Ellen Road. Yeah. Is a, oh, nice but then idea. the crowds were locked out. So it's kind of. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Killed it. It was going to be like a glory. It would be over two days. I think it was about fifty-five miles the route we were looking at. So right. we were going to do it over two days, but it all went oh, tits went. up, unfortunately. unfortunately, due to COVID. But um, yeah, that I've, I had that in my mind from last season yeah. <laughs> when I thought we might go up as well. <laughs> yeah, but never mind. We'll do it. We'll do something else at some point. Um, we briefly just mentioned Phil Hay there. You guys do the Phil Hay show as well. Mm. Mm. Um, how's that? Do, do you have to change a little bit how you conduct yourself when it's for an athletic production, or do you just? Still be the same, really. You know, yeah, try to be a bit more grown up. Yeah, we don't we don't go on quite so many odd tangents with Phil. It's yeah. more, and nor should we, in fairness, because he's got actual good Pro- knowledge. Proper knowledge. He yeah. knows stuff, does Phil, yeah. and he's got <laughs> proper opinions and he's connected. So we might as well chat to him about that stuff. But it was one of those things that came about that the Athletic were launching podcasts, and because everyone works for them remotely, they didn't have any anyone to host it. They didn't have yeah. studios or anything, so they came to us as a, a way of getting it made, essentially. Mm. Um, and we were obviously happy to do it. We've done stuff with Phil before, yeah. and he's he's great. And like he's helped out with quite a few bits for us. Like he did the charity thing, and af- yeah. after we were promoted, we did a live stream on YouTube, and Phil came on that as well. So yeah. that's been really good. The only the only childish bit on that is we've now got adscapes for um, adverts for manscaping on there, <laughs> yeah. which is <laughs> like a special shaver. Yeah. So we have to oh, we have oh, to, oh, so, we have to read, so we have to read those out, which. Yeah. Um, that's nice. That's the only childish <laughs> bit on there now, to be fair. So, but no, it's, it's really good, and it's another good thing to do. So it's um, it's one of yeah. those things that like we probably do for free in truth. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> no, the, it's good. And and do you know when I listen to that, Phil A doesn't come up for breath very often. But no. that's not a problem because no, all the knowledge is superb. But when he's talking, it's almost like he is or represents the club. Mm. Like his knowledge and and it's all so spot on, you know. When you listen to all our other podcasts, obviously, Square Ball, your fans of, of Leeds United, like we're fans of Leeds United, you know everybody. So you kind of a lot of, a lot of the times you start senses of I think blah 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 or rumours are. But with Phil, it's almost matter of fact, and it's almost like you're listening to Angus Kinnear or something, mm. you know. And um, and he very very rarely gets it wrong. So his insight, whoever feeds him the information. He seems to have more than other journalists, in my opinion, mm. or whether other journalists don't have a, a, a podcast to broadcast it on. <laughs> Maybe that's the case, but he's, he is. Um, I, I love listening to him because I feel like I'm getting the real inside like deal. I think he's. Yeah. I think he's fairly close to the club. So if they, but as always with the club, they'll kind of tell you people things they want people to know essentially. Yeah. But I think with the Athletic as well, because that's now a, a network of of loads of really good journalists from all over the country. He, he was like, I can't remember who the player was now, but there's kind of a, like a WhatsApp group, and someone just was on there saying like, has anyone got like Cristiano Ronaldo's phone number or something? Just on this group, <laughs> and someone was like, oh yeah, I've got it. So it just kind of shows the so the connections. Oh I think uh, the connections are there that there's enough former because there's former like people out like the Times and the Guardian, yeah. and as well as loads of regional people. So I think between everyone on there, it probably can be fairly well connected with with stuff, and yeah. we'll get to hear about things. Although yeah. we did break uh, Rodrigo de Paul in a way that, in a way that Phil couldn't yeah, without yeah, yeah, exactly. the fingers exactly. crossed, with, just uh, by just by pestering. Yeah, with Dan's um, pestering techniques, just tweet yeah. him daily. That's um, what you need to do. There's some gentleman on Twitter that um, probably would have the police knocking on the door if they were sending messages like that to maybe <laughs> yeah. women every day. But um, yeah, Dan seems to get away with it with the square yeah. ball to yeah. a footballer. So um, no, it's good. And if he comes to Leeds, um, I might 
pat Dan on the back for his efforts. I think you know? so, yeah, yeah. 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 You should get a slice of the agent's fee. Well, she sent us a DM because you could bet on it before as well. If he'd have said, if he'd given, <laughs> yeah. given us the nod that he was coming, we could have, yeah, uh, yeah. Could exactly. have got some money on that it. That would but, have been uh, a good one. Sadly yeah. not. Uh, what's next for the square ball? Obviously, enjoy the Premier League, and uh, but uh, anything anything coming up this season that well, we should know about? Well, we've just launched. We've kind of changed all the subscription model. TSB Plus, we've called it to try and put everything under. So like Disney Plus, <laughs> essentially, yeah. <laughs> don't, not breaking trademarks, I don't think. But <laughs> trying to bring everything because we've got now essentially you could be subscribed to like a paper magazine, a digital subscription. Uh, an extra ball subscription so we've, we've tried to just make it a bit more straightforward so right. it all kind of falls under one product now so and all the um, if you're on that all the podcasts are ad free as well because that's another thing that people have complained about over the years is like the sick of the adverts it's like well it's free so yeah, yeah. yeah it's kind of <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, so it's there as an option now for people if they don't want the adverts they can they can skip them that way but yeah I think we're just more of the same and we'll hopefully we've started doing the match ball 30 this year as well because it's 30 years since our last promotion to the Premier League so we're mm. kind of going through game by game on the first season back back then and then the second season which is obviously us not to do any spoilers but that is us winning the league in the right. season after <laughs> so um, <laughs> under Wilkinson and everything so we're going through that and that's been that's quite good for me because I was too young to actually remember that I mm. started going to games 93, 94 so it's been quite nice we've managed to get quite a lot of match footage from it and as research from his book and stuff Moscow's got loads of press and yeah. programme clippings and stuff from it so going through game by game on that and seeing almost see reliving the twists and turns of it because I think one of the the things that almost from last season we've, we've already forgetting some of the horrible tense moments of it because you just remember the glorious bits now don't yeah. you when you look back on it yeah, but yeah, yeah. almost going back and looking at that and we'll be able to kind of go oh, we've blown it here. we're making a mess of it Strachan's crap in his replacing <laughs> McAllister's not up to the job <laughs> Not sure about Tony Dorigo. You can kind of go back and look at it almost <laughs> as it as it was then, um, and and hopefully give a bit of an insight on that. But that was just something we we did because we thought it'd be yeah. thought it'd be good fun. So we're, we're trying to always do little bits and bobs. So yeah. you never know what will come next. Yeah, looking Brilliant. forward to it. Yeah. Um, I suppose wrapping up, we talk about Leeds in the Premier League this season. What I saw the Athletics say eleventh uh, uh, was where they predicted uh, Leeds United. I'm sure anything above the bottom three would be, you mm. know, huzzah. Um, but w- what are you expecting over the course of this season, do you think? I like to think we'll never be in any massive danger. That's that's my aim, really, is that I don't want to have to be like Villa were last year where they're needing results going into the final couple of games. I'd like to think we'll always be between 10th and 15th and kind of out of bother, and that's absolutely fine. And if we get a run like Sheffield United did or something last yeah. year, then absolutely amazing. But yeah, staying up is... Is so vital for the, for us, and I think the prospect of going down this year just doesn't it doesn't really bear thinking mm. about. Particularly given the situation with COVID and stuff, the thought that we might not actually get a full Ellen Road mm. for any Premier League games and then go down again is, is something that kind of haunts me a little bit. That we've waited yeah. so long for it, we weren't there and to actually witness yeah. it happening, the promotion happening, and then to potentially not be there to see any of the games. Or I mean, I've seen the I don't know what you think of it, but you've seen the pictures of the socially distanced yeah. games. It just yeah. looks terrible. It's not... I mean, it's, it's a bizarre one because to be in the stadium watching it we are on two eyes live is a wonderful thing, but also soaking up all the atmosphere mm. at a game is... Some of the best times I've been at Ellen Road is because I've had str- strangers like jumping on my back and when yeah. and, fall, and falling over and, you know, getting a, the, the whole chance in unison going. And if you can't do that, it's it's kind of wiping out probably two thirds of yeah. what it's about going to football for me. You know, I'm not saying I just go just to have people jump all over me, but I don't. So I want to watch Leeds United win mm. in particular. But yeah, I, I agree. We are, I'm not keen on it. If it's the only option, of course, if, if we're lucky enough to go, obviously... You guys have probably covered it. There's, like we have. There's obviously all these contentious issues with who gets tickets mm-hmm. and who can get them, and yeah, tough, blah blah it? blah. And you know, it's it's a lose lose situation. Not everybody's going to win, unfortunately. But no. but I just hope that COVID. Bug, I'm going to swear them buggers off <laughs> soon, so you we can. Swear, can it's your podcast. So, you can so we can, yeah, we can get back to normal as soon as we can, and be. And like you said, Michael, if if heaven forbid the the worst thing happened and Leeds did get relegated, which I don't think we will, by the way. And we can't be in there witnessing any Premier League games. It'd be heartbreaking. It'd be a double heartbreak, won't it? I don't think we will go down though. No. I feel like I feel like last season and the going up, it felt it felt healing in a strange way. Like it, it 
it sort of washed away all the bad years to an extent. Yeah. And I know I wouldn't ever want to do it again, but having got out of it now, I can almost reflect on them slightly differently. Whereas yeah. it felt like it felt like for years and years we were stuck and there was no way we were ever going to get out of it. And then mm. Bielsa came along and he, he fixed us a bit as a club. Yeah, but yeah. He, he managed to do something that no one else came close to. I know, I think the Monk season, that ignited something a little bit and it, yeah. it yeah. kind of made us believe that we didn't have to be terrible because we just had those seasons of finishing 15th every year, more or less. Yeah. And that was a little sniff of it. But then Bielsa came in, he just, he's, what he's done for the club is just, I don't think we can ever mm. thank him enough. And like, he's, I just hope he stays forever, which I know he can't. Yeah. But um, yeah, he's, he's, I feel like he's fixed us and that's yeah. why I think we'll probably be all right this year. And hopefully, yeah. with the, and hopefully with less pressure, we don't have to, like you said, we can lose a game and still be happy with it. Mm. Not yeah. very often, but yeah. we don't have to, there doesn't have to be quite the same wailing and gnashing of teeth and, mm. you know, pretending the sky's falling in whenever we lose a game like <laughs> there has been the last two seasons because there's been so much pressure on it. And yeah. we've been here for so long that it's, it has felt impossible to escape. But now we have, I like to think we can try and operate a bit more like a normal football club. Yeah. <laughs> EastEnders just came on then in the background. East, really? the EastEnders. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great way to end. End of it. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Great way to end. Um, well, that is it for this episode of LS11 Extra. Thanks very much for uh, hosting us once again here at the Peacock. Really, really appreciate uh, being down here. Um, normal LS11 podcast. Make sure you download that. Give five-star review, subscribe, all that bit gubbins. Um, and have a look at all the uh, other YouTube content that's being produced as well on the LS11 channel and make sure you subscribe to that one as well um, uh, Ryan as ever thank you very much thank you uh, and Michael thank you so much good luck with everything with the square thank ball you. this season and thanks very much for joining us no, cheers for having me thank thanks you. very much this is LS11 LS11